Hello, my name is Helen Costley. I'm the mother of Kevin Costley, who you just have heard from, and he told his side of how he began playing the piano. Now I'm going to tell another side because I was there and I remember things just a wee bit differently than he does, but uh, it's all the same story. It's about God's gifting. I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. I'm very sorry, but uh, when I think about it, it touches me so. And he was just, uh, we just watched it unfold. We watched it unfold in our family. and. He remembers, I vaguely remember, uh, when he was eight years old and thinking that he could play at Calvary and couldn't. I, I, I really didn't pay that much of attention to it, but he remembered it greatly. But then a little later, we didn't have a piano at our house, and so the only piano he was around was the one at church. But uh, he had learned to sing harmony uh, early on and so he had a good ear, I knew that. And we helped uh, start a church and when he was 10 years old. And I, my husband committed us to help this group begin a church and I didn't want to be there. And the first Sunday we, but I went to honor his commitment. And the first Sunday we were there, uh, the pastor's wife asked me to play because there was no one to play the piano and I had been an assistant in another church, and I did not want to be there. I didn't plan to do anything. It was just hard-headedness on my part, but God used it, and uh, uh, Kevin was standing beside me and heard, and she asked me to play, and I said no, and he said, I will, and he only knew that one song at Calvary, and so I think she knew that. She didn't care. It was such a small group. It didn't matter. So. He played the piano and played that one song. We sang it and then sang with the out company to the rest of the service. And then that afternoon, I mean, when we went home from church, he kept on at me and said, Mom, show me another song, show me another song. And I don't remember what the other song was, but it was in the same key, of course, because he knew those three chords. And he played that at night that night and the second song that he had learned. Well, from then on, in the next three months, we watched a miracle unfold. He was uh, actually a distraction in the service because here was this little 10-year-old boy playing all over the piano. We just watched it unfold and such a gifting. And, but he would play, this group of people had a habit of joining in the offertory and they would sing whatever the offertory was. And he didn't like that. And he said, that's my turn. That's my time to play. And I'd say, just leave it alone. Don't bother about it. And then the next thing I knew, he was playing an offering and they were singing, had joined in, and then they just sort of squeaked out because uh, he had pitched it in a key that was too high to sing. And, and I knew he had done it on purpose. And then on the way home, I said, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. And he said, it's my turn. It's my turn and they shouldn't sing. And I said, leave it alone. So the next time we went, he played for the offertory, a song I had never heard before. And they would turn around and look at me and turn around and look at me as if to say, what's he doing? What's he doing? Well, I didn't know. And I just shrugged my shoulders. And then on the way home again, uh, he was, he said they couldn't sing with him. And he was just really happy about that because he had made that up. It was no song that he ever had learned at all. And he composed his first song right then. And so I told him he could not do that. It was attitude. And I said, don't do that anymore. Well, he went ahead and he, he just soaked up. Every time we went to other places to church, he was always sitting on the very front row, where, wherever the organ or the pianist was watching it. Well, he'd come home and try all these different uh, 
uh, renditions and different methods of playing. And we had people that would come into our little church and bring sheet music, they were visitors, and they would put the sheet music in front of him and he couldn't play it because he didn't know music. And if they were brave enough to go ahead and sing one one verse and chorus of the song, then he could follow them in whatever key they sang it in. And he could just, and he, he had it. Once he heard it, he had it. And then he started to get embarrassed about it. And he was 12 by then. And, and uh, we tried to find a piano teacher. He wanted to learn music. And we tried to find a piano teacher and could not find anyone that wouldn't say, everyone, all the teachers I talked to said, ask if he played by ear, and yes. Well, he would have to stop everything by ear. He could never play again by ear. That was how they were taught to teach, and that's what they thought. And I said, he couldn't do that. That's like telling an artist not to see any colors except black or white, and he could not do that. And besides that, he was our church pianist. And so we, we decided our, our piano that we had gotten was so beat up, we just, it was terrible, and we decided we need to get a better piano for him. And, and so we went to a music company and, and to buy a new piano. They, uh, one of the salesmen that worked there heard our story, heard his story, and said we were just telling his story all over again, the salesman's story. And he had sent himself to music school and had learned music himself. He ended up a band instructor. But uh, anyhow, he said he could find, he thought, a teacher for Kevin who would not require him to stop everything by ear. So he put me in touch with this lady. We went. She asked him to play something for her, something he liked. So he played How Great Thou Art. And she said everybody that she had ever seen that played by ear uh, had wrong fingering, but his fingering was correct. And I said, well, he had the master teacher. So she decided she would take him and she started teaching him from several different books. And I went with him every time and this young lady was there that uh, was teaching, she was teaching her how to teach piano. And she was showing her the book she was teaching Kevin from the books from which she was teaching him. And, and uh, one of them was a beginner book and another one was an intermediate and another one was a teacher's book. And, and the teacher was just dumbfounded with it. And she said, he's teaching, he's learning from all those? And she said, yes. She said, actually, what I am doing is showing him what he does on paper, what it looks like on paper. And he just soaked it up and just absorbed it. And uh, from then on, uh, it's just history. He ended up teaching it and writing and composing, which you've heard and will hear. Uh, but that's, like Paul Harvey said, page two, the rest of the story. <laughs>